Hey guys, this is Beth, ASMR for the masses, and I just got my brand new HD webcam in today, and I am so excited about it. It is much better than my old camera. So to celebrate, I thought I would make you guys a video, and today I'm going to be doing a makeup tutorial. I don't wear a whole lot of makeup. Right now I am fresh faced, straight from the gym, looking all kinds of rough, <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and show you all what I do for a full fledged face of makeup for special occasions or if I'm going out on the town for a wedding, the works. So we'll go ahead and get started. Before I started this video, I went ahead and put on a moisturizer after I washed my face. And it's so important to use moisturizer even if you're not going to be putting any makeup on. It keeps your skin healthy. It's best to find a, a moisturizer with SPF in it. This is my favorite moisturizer. I've been using this for three years maybe. It's Neutrogena Healthy Skin Anti-Wrinkle Cream. It's almost out as you can see. <laughs> and the reason I put it on before the video is because when you put moisturizer on, you want to make sure you give it time to settle in so that it's ready for makeup. Okay, the first step to applying foundation, which is not something I use normally, is putting on moisturizer and then using a primer. And primers are so important when using foundation because foundation doesn't go on very evenly without some kind of a base on your face. Think of how you put a primer on the wall before you paint it because it makes it look so much better after it's over. So this is the primer that I use. It's L'Oreal, I believe, yes. L'Oreal Paris Magic Perfecting Base. And it's very easy to use. And you don't need a whole lot of it either. Just a little bit. I like to just put a little dollop on my fingers. And before you put the primer on, you don't want to just slather it on your face. You want to aim right here and here, which is your T-zone down the chin. It goes straight down and across. And your T-zone is where your oil built up the most. So what the primer does is it smooths your skin out I'm using it everywhere, but <laughs> it smooths your skin out and it mattifies it at the same time. So you don't look oily. You don't have any slick spots anywhere. Okay. You don't need to give the primer time to set. You can move right onto your foundation. It's ready to go nice and soft and smooth. It's going to help the foundation go on a lot easier. Always shake up your foundation before you use it. Most foundations have oils in them that settle, and if you don't shake it up, you're going to just get all that oil on top, which is gross. I don't like to use a lot of foundation. I usually use tinted moisturizers on my day-to-day. I be used that much. And what I like to do with foundation is just dot wherever I use foundation. Put a little on my neck. I'm gonna wipe off the excess. I don't like to use a lot, but just enough to cover. 
and it will go on so smoothly with that primer. I got so excited about putting my foundation on that I forgot to tell you <laughs> what foundation I was using. I'll tell you here in a second. But when applying foundation, you want to make sure that you swoop with your fingers in a downward motion. Because you have tons of tiny little hairs all over your face. And if you push up when you smooth your foundation, you're going to catch all those little hairs on your face and they're going to stick straight up. And you're not going to get even coverage. Always aim to move downward. I also don't like to use wedges or foundation brushes. I don't like the idea of using them more than once because all of the oils and the bacteria from your face get slothed up in there. Um, it would be nice if you could use a new one every time, but the problem with that is that when you use a new sponge, it soaks up more foundation than actually what goes on your face. So I feel like I'm wasting the product. And the problem with using a new one every time is that it gets expensive. <laughs> Very expensive. Okay. The foundation that I just used is called Revlon Photo Ready. It's in a shade a little a little darker than my my natural shade but that's kind of how I like it especially now because I have a bit of color from going to the beach I have freckles everywhere <laughs> so I don't look even anyway just a quick side note I told you I like to use tinted moisturizer mostly I recommend it for daily coverage just because it's not as heavy as foundation and this is my favorite tinted moisturizer to use. It's Sonia Kashuk Radiant. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Kashuk. It's fairly expensive. I find it at Target. It's about $15 a bottle, but it lasts a good while. You only need a little bit. And then mine's in beige if you're looking for the color. It's a wonderful tinted moisturizer. It kind of works like a BB cream. It helps make the skin better the more you use it. Okay. I don't have a lot of blemishes, but what I do have are bags under my eyes. Um, the skin under my eyes is actually a lot lighter than the rest of my skin. I'm not sure why, <laughs> but um, I love to use concealer just to touch things up. And concealer can be used for so much more than blemishes. You can use it for under eye circles. What I use it mainly for is broken blood vessels on the side of the nose. I'm not sure if you can see. They just look like little spider veins, and I don't like it, so I use concealer to cover it up. And you can use a cream concealer, which is fine, which is actually something that I used for a very long time until I discovered powder concealer, which I find to be much easier to blend and much lighter. It doesn't feel so cakey. If you are using a cream concealer, just put a little bit on your ring finger. Rub your two ring fingers together and wherever your blemish is, just lightly tap. Or if you're going under your eyes, just lightly tap all around. The reason you want to use your ring finger is because it's the weakest finger on your hand and so you're not wiping the concealer away. You're just blending it into your skin. But if you're using a powder concealer like me, which is much easier to use, 
it blends fairly easily with a tiny brush. This is L'Oreal Paris. Again, more L'Oreal. You can see the top comes off and there's a little brush. And then you just unscrew the top. And this is True Match Naturel. You can see inside there's a little bit of powder. Just dip your brush lightly. And then I like to work my way all the way up my nose. It blends so nicely. You can't even tell that you're wearing concealer. And it just makes those, those extra blemishes disappear. It helps my dark circles and uneven skin tone around my eyes disappear. It blends so nicely. It takes a second to blend it, which is wonderful. Because concealer can be very tiresome. is an optional step. Usually foundation and concealer are enough, but I like to kind of bring it all together. So I like to use a very light powder foundation on top of it. I don't like to use a whole lot. And this is Neutrogena Mineral Shears. You can use this just by itself and it looks fantastic. You can use it on top of tinted moisturizer, which is what I like to do sometimes, just to give it a more full look. Take a large brush, a kabuki, preferably, a nice one. I actually think this is a bit of a blush brush, but it works for me when it comes to foundation. Knock off the excess. And just lightly, just work it all around a little more. It gives it such a nice finish. And it doesn't, you can see the skin doesn't look caked with makeup. When it comes to powder foundation, you want to get as close to your natural color as possible. You can also use a translucent powder, which works just as well, and it also brightens your face up. It gives it a bit of a sheen. Okay, looks good. Moving on to blush. Blush is easy to explain in a certain light. It's kind of like a bra. You don't just want to take one blush color and just swipe it all over your face. This is my favorite blush. I've been using it for 10 years maybe. I've had this for so long. And like I said, I don't wear a lot of makeup, so I have a lot of old stuff that I love. This is Clinique. And you can see how old it is. <laughs> Just by looking at the label. But this is two different colors. It's Sun Swept and Buried Light. It actually came with a, a lip gloss, but I've lost it over the years. These are the two colors. The sun swept, and of course the berry blush. When you have two colors like this, one is more of a bronzer, the other is more of a rosy color. 
you want to start with the bronzer. The darker color of the blush, blow on it, make sure we always get off the excess. The darker color is going to be the underwire of the bra. So you're going to find your cheekbone. A lot of people say if you go like this, you can see the apples of your cheeks. It's not so with everyone. So the best thing to do is to just touch and find where your cheekbone is. Go under your cheekbone, circle around and find this little area right here. And that's where your bronzer is going to go or your darker blush color. So just lightly up on the temple, ever so slightly. And this is just going to add some depth to your face. It makes you look thinner, and it really brings out the cheekbones. And like I said, you don't need a whole lot, you can barely even tell, but there's just a little bit what we call contouring. Okay, then you're going to take your rosy color and find the apples of your cheeks. You can smile and find them, but it's best, like I said, just follow the cheekbone down and feel the plushest part of your cheek. It helps the smile because you can concentrate the berry color there, the rosy. You want the rosy, just a light rosy flush. You don't want <laughs> You don't want to overdo it. You kind of want to try to blend those two together as much as you can. The next step is not necessary, but I like to do it sometimes. Find a shimmery color, and this can be a blush, or you can look in your eyeshadow and find a very light shimmer color. I'll come back to this later. There's a very nice shimmery primer in my eyeshadow. I'm actually not even sure if I'm going to use this one, but just use a light dusting of it, and that's going to go over top. just ever so slightly over top of the blush. This is your highlight. Ooh, that's not good. My brush is falling apart. Just over top. It's going to highlight your cheekbones. It's really going to bring them out. You can highlight in other areas, the bridge of your nose. If you take an eye, uh, an eyeshadow brush, just go ahead and do the insides of the corners of your eyes. This helps your eyes look bigger, wider, brighter. Okay. So there you go, the three parts to blush. The highlighting's not necessary, but I like to use it. I often like to go back and just kind of lightly blend with my Kabuki brush. Just brings it all together. Gives you a nice glow. Okay. All right. The next thing I'm going to do are my eyebrows. I have very light eyebrows. They barely match the color of my hair, which is sadly blonde with terrible roots because I haven't had my hair highlighted in a while. So. Um, sometimes I will use a powder with an angled brush like this and I will dip it in a light brown powder and I'll just lightly brush over it just to give it a subtle look. But for special occasions, for 
going all out, I use a pencil. It's more of a crayon, and it is Almay. And it's called, I think it's just Almay eyeliner. It's actually an eyeliner. Um, it comes with its own little sharpener in the end. I rarely use it because it wastes so much of the eyeliner, but I find when it's nice and dull like this, just like that, it works a lot better with the eyebrows. I'm going to need a mirror for this. Just lightly, just so lightly, brush the crown over my eye or my eyebrows. Just brushing the hair. I'm not even touching the skin underneath of my eyebrows. Just letting the crown. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just letting the crown do its magic. And you can see it kind of matches my hair color now. Do the other side. Slightly brushing. And it's so easy to mess this up too, because you can press too hard and then you look like Groucho Marx. <laughs> If they do end up a bit too harsh, you can see that they're colored with a crown, you can take the angled brush, like I was showing you before, and just lightly, just blend it, blend it into your eyebrow. Okay, may have it, my eyebrows don't look very even right now. I have like, this is raised and this I'm not sure. I'm not sure what went wrong there. Yikes. I need to tweeze, apparently. Ugh. Okay, well, for the sake of. Huh? Maybe if I just. I don't have my eyebrow brush with me, otherwise I would kind of... I need to get these done. Not that I'm one to be telling you now, after all of this. But a trick to remembering how to pluck your eyebrows. You want to always stay with your natural shape. Don't try to change the shape of your eyebrows. If you want to know where to start and where to stop, where the arch should be, take a basic brush or a pencil and put it right against the crook of your nose right here. Sit it straight up. Try to do it straight. <laughs> when it's straight aligned with your nose, that's where your eyebrow should start. Then take it and move it and find the center. This is hard to do in your camera. Find the center of your pupil. That's where your arch should be. Right there. Where the, the pencil stuff. And then take and keeping it here at the crook of your nose, go to the very corner of your eye and that's where your eyebrow should stop. So that's just a very easy guide to remembering where your eyebrows should start and stop. I'm obviously having a bad eyebrow day. <laughs> okay, moving on to eyeshadow. I rarely wear eyeshadow, but the important thing is to always use eyeshadow that corresponds with your eye color. So if you have blue eyes like me, you want to go for browns and golds and lighter pearl colors. You don't want to go full blue or green or, I mean, you can, but if you want it to be soft and smoky, this is the best way to do it. Let's see. 
I'm going to be using a brand called, this one's really dusty, I'm sorry. It's called Flirt. And I got this uh, at my local Kohl's. It's number two, Flirty Blue Eyes. So they are colors that correspond with the color of my eye. And usually, <laughs> you can see my camera. Usually, oh, that's really disorienting, sorry. When your colors are numbered like this, one, two, three, four, it's a sequence of how it should go onto your eyelid. And I'm gonna teach you how to do that right now. Get your eyeshadow brush, brush rather. Number one is gonna be an all over color. So you're just gonna dip into number one. Don't be afraid to use a lot of this. And just go all over. It's almost like a primer. Not a primer in the sense that it helps the other colors stick, but it just lays down a nice flat base color. In which case, this is kind of a shimmery, pale, pearl color. Just all over the eye. Okay. Number two is your lid. Just from the lash line to right there. So number two, which is this nice, I want to say it's like a, almost a gray color, but it's a nice depth of a color. It's like, maybe like a khaki color. I don't know what to call it. And you're going to do that on your lid. A lot of people like to do eyeliner before they do their eyeshadow. I am not a fan of following that procedure, but just because sometimes the lid colors can really cover up the eyeliner. There's that. Okay. The third color, which is this pretty shimmery, it's, it's purple. The color's not showing up very well on the camera. The third color is going to be in your crease. So from here up, you just kind of want to blend it into the lid. Just light. You don't want to use too much of the crease color. Less is more. Just start with a little bit. If you need to add more, you can. I might have used a bit too much there. I've got some on my nose. going a little too far. You almost don't want to go that far. And if you do, hmm, just take a, a tissue, kind of blend it into the corner instead. I'm not sure what happened there. It's just starting to look a bit clownish, isn't it? And I found that you can always touch corners of your eyes up. Some that powder foundation. thing to do is just blend them into each other. Okay. 
The fourth color is always going to be your brow. It's like a highlighter. And this is a goldish color. Right along your brow bone, under your eye, uh, eye brows. I'm thinking, I'm thinking this looks weird because I haven't put any eyeliner on yet. <laughs> I'm just going to do a little more lid work and blend it in to that crease. Blending is your friend. That's fair. Okay. Oh well. Now, Usually, day to day, I don't do eyeliner on my lid. I will do it on the insides of my eyelids, which gives you a bright eyed kind of look. You look awake, but you don't actually have any eyeliner on your lid. But since this is fancy schmancy night, we're gonna go ahead. Actually, I think what I'm gonna do. Instead of putting eyeliner on my lid, I'm going to find a dark brown. You want to find a color obviously darker than your lid shadow, which is in this um, Revlon Photo Ray eyeshadow kit, which is really great actually. This is number 501, it's Metropolitan. And I just like to take my angled brush again, just pick it a little bit just to wet it, and I'm going to dip right into this dark brown color, and just line my eyes with that. It's going to give it a soft look. It's going to give it a soft look without those harsh lines. Which is always great. Less is more. You can always add. If you want to do the wing, just a nice, nice light brushing. Follow that to your bottom lid. Get a nice little light wing that way. Just make sure that it's not too much. Again, on the other side. I'll start from the outside with the wing. Can see it's nice and light you can't see too much but it adds a little something I think I apologize I need to use a mirror because it's completely backwards <laughs> in the webcam, so, and again, follow through right there with the bottom lid, just kind of meet the corners together, just like that, and now, because I have strange little eyes, I always do the kind of lining I do on a day-to-day, -day, which is where I take the crayon. This is the same one I used for my eyebrows. And I, right under your lid, you can see this little white part under here. I'm going to use the eyeliner on that. And this does take practice. And you will poke yourself in the eye occasionally. <laughs> and it will hurt. Like a bitch. But... <laughs> 
A lot of people. Oh my god. Oh, crap. I just broke my eyeliner. <laughs> Give me a second. Bear with me, people. me for one moment. I will get a different pencil. the end of it. Usually I will use a black brown color on the inside of my lids but for the sake of the video now I'm going to be using Perfect Blend by CoverGirl. It's just a basic pencil. Basic black. Which is fine too. This may not look so great. Because it's black. And the liner I used is brown. Like I said, definitely takes some practice and some getting used to. I don't like basic liner pencils like this because they just don't offer the color that I like. It's not vibrant enough. It's dull. I do the same thing on the bottom. You can see that I just get the inner rim. I'm not even going on the outside of my lid. And people advise against this because they say it can cause eye issues, I guess, stone eyes and the such, but I think it's fine. I've been doing this for like. 10 years and I've never had an issue. As long as you don't use superbly old makeup, keep yourself clean. Don't let anyone else use your makeup, obviously. Shouldn't get you any trouble. But the reason I like this crayon so much is because it's very long wear and no smudge, which is why I use it on my eyebrows as well. Okay. Minor inconvenience there. Mascara is next. This has been my favorite mascara as of late. It is Clump Crusher by Lash Blast by CoverGirl. And it's in a really cool, fat, funky casing. And they're not screwing around <laughs> when they say that you don't get any clumps from this. I have put on layers of this stuff and it doesn't clump at all. So, it's nice and curved. You can see it's got a curve to it. So when you put it on your lashes, you're just gonna flick it upward. Gives it a little curl. Cute. <laughs> the 
use my mirror for this. Another trick to applying mascara, if you don't have the clump crusher, or whatever this thing is called, if you don't have that, if you take your mascara brush, put it right against your lid. Even if you're not wearing eyeliner, it will give the appearance, if you press that mascara just up on the inner part of your lid, it will give the impression that you're wearing eyeliner. And when pressing, when you come up, if you just shimmy it back and forth as you come up on the lid, it will help prevent clumping. I'm going over this way too many times because I'm trying to show you. There's one. I'll show you another one of my favorite mascaras. I'll do it on the other lid. And this is another All Me. Intense eye color. I'm sorry. I'm fumbly today. It's intense eye color. And it has little shimmery, sparkly things in the mascara you can't see even up close but what it does is it reflects the light so it makes your eyes sparkle this wing is too long it's bothering me that's a little better um another mascara tip don't do this <laughs> don't ever do that with your mascara uh, you see people do it in the movies all the time what this does is it creates a massive air bubble in your mascara tube. And it, it just makes the air form in the middle and then all of the mascara gets pushed to the outside of the tube. And the air on the inside helps that mascara around the tube to dry up and you won't get your money's worth. <laughs> You'll miss out on all of the mascara. So when you're applying mascara, take it out gently once Apply. Get my mirror again. <clears throat> and I have used this mascara for years. I really liked it. It's in the black. And this is part of their eye color collection where they coordinate colors with, of eyeshadows and eyeliners and mascara with your eye color. And just tip your wand a bit forward to get the inner part right there. I'm almost out of this mascara, that's why it's not going on very, very nicely. But when you need more mascara, if you want to put another coat on, put your wand in, just twist the cap back on. Or, if you feel like slightly bending your wand, try to sweep the outside of the tube and then pull it out gently. You don't want to create that air bubble because it's going to make a waste of your, of your mascara. You're going to be buying a new tube every so often. One problem I run into when I use powder eyeshadow, it gets dotted all around here. Again, just take a kabuki brush. You probably don't even need powder for this, but I like to do it just to go back over. Sweep all of that extra eyeshadow out from under there. Just 
just touch things up. And finally, I rarely, rarely do I wear lipstick. I have very thin lips, so mostly if I try to line them and put lipstick on them, it draws so much attention to my mouth, and I have tiny teeth too. Crooked smile. So um, I usually just use um, Chapstick's Cherry Lip Balm. It's got a slight hint of color to it, and it keeps my lips from being dry like they are right now. But I have found something that I really love. It's another L'Oreal piece. It's L'Oreal Color Riche Balm. And it's a balm with a light touch of color to it. And this one is called Caring Coral. Because apparently coral is caring. I don't know. And I love to use this because it, it moisturizes my lips and it gives it a nice light pink color to it. it it's not it's not so nice as a balm. It doesn't moisturize as nice as like a chapstick would, but it's definitely refreshing on the lips, so. And I think that's it. So if you know me, you know I'm very subtle. I don't like to go crazy with the makeup, but I do like to draw attention to the eyes. So when I go out in the town, I probably do a little more smoky with the liner, make the liner a little thicker on the lid, but because I broke that one, it's kind of hard to, to show you, but this is full-fledged makeup for me, and I like it, and it's fun, it's just time-consuming, but I hope you guys learned a few things today, and I really appreciate you watching, and hopefully this helped you learn a few things especially when it comes to plucking your eyebrows or how you use mascara. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be doing a new video soon. Hopefully a role play. I'm thinking of a comprehensive doctor visit. Gotta get some props first, but I'm really looking forward to it and I uh, hope you guys enjoy this. Thank you so much for watching.